And so let's look at the Tanzu Mission Control architecture. Our first layer, we, we uh, see our lifecycle management and managed clusters. And so uh, representing um, the ability to uh, deploy and lifecycle manage the clusters themselves on, uh, on AWS or VCR or Azure or for uh, any other environments, or if, if we want to deploy the cluster through some other means and then attach it to Tanzu Mission Control, then we have the ability to do the, uh, the apply the, uh, the resource hierarchy, the, so the, the, if you look at the layers above, uh, above the cluster layer here, um, it, that kind of implies that, that uh, the, the things that we have above here can be applied to either or. So once, once you have uh, attached a cluster, you don't get to do the lifecycle management of a cluster that you've just attached. However, when it comes to identity and access management, uh, uh, attaching those clusters uh, to allow, um, allow the namespaces and the clusters themselves uh, uh, to be provisioned into these groups for easy identity and access management, um, as well as the policy engine, being able to apply security and network and image registry policies um, namespace quotas, uh, et cetera, um, to, to the entire fleet. And so while uh, lifecycle management services themselves um, are, are limited to uh, just the clusters that you choose to have Sanzu Mission Control deploy on those platforms, any cluster is able to still take advantage of really this, uh, uh, this, the majority of this functionality from uh, available through Sanzu Mission Control. <laughs> And so let's uh, uh, take a, a quick look at, at uh, how the attachment process works. So for attaching existing clusters. So I could have some cluster over here. And um, generally the way that applications are deployed on Kubernetes is uh, a provider uh, pr will provide uh, the, the, uh, uh, a, a manifest that, will, uh, that can be deployed to Kubernetes that will automatically uh, install the appropriate containers in the environments and uh, namespaces and make the other uh, configurations uh, to allow that cluster to be monitored uh, and integrated with Hanzu Mission Control. And so um, when you come to the Hanzu Mission Control interface and you see I'm going to attach a cluster, it gives that very standard Kubernetes manifest that you can just copy and you can paste or you can um, work, hand to the administrator of that Kubernetes cluster to say, you know, here, if you can apply this to the Kubernetes cluster, it'll allow um, uh, the Tanzu Mission Control environment to have that, that visibility and, and to be able to provide, uh, uh, provide all the services that it's, it's capable of providing. <clears throat> okay, now we think about, let's look at, at uh, um, our resource hierarchy there with uh, organizations, cluster groups, and workspaces. Hierarchy. At the top of our hierarchy, we have the organization. And within an organization, um, we have uh, these constructs known as cluster groups and workspaces. And so first, let's look at the cluster groups. You know, what, what is a cluster group? Well, a cluster group is a group of Kubernetes clusters. And, uh, and it's, it's a very, very flexible definition um, because an organization may have uh, um, a need for, for, may deploy uh, certain applications for a particular function, for a particular team, for a particular application, uh, and may have uh, clusters deployed at several different sites and, and need people to have certain access to, to combination. And those this may be a subset of an organization's uh, overall um, uh, uh, volume of Kubernetes clusters. Uh, so organizations have, have, um, may have complex or do have complex needs. Uh, and, and, uh, and so cluster groups are, are a highly flexible entity to make it simple to, to, to take clusters, uh, to provide them into a grouping that can align with the roles and projects uh, that exist uh, to make sure that, that different team members can get access to the clusters that they need to support their organization, their, uh, their team, their project. Um, and uh, alike, so cluster groups are generally, um, you know, cluster level access is, is, is generally associated with uh, DevOps users or operational support users. Um, whereas uh, developers often uh, will generally have access to, to namespaces. Every Kubernetes um, application gets deployed always in a namespace. Uh, and uh, it's generally common for applications uh, deployed in Kubernetes to, to create namespaces and to use namespaces as resource boundaries uh, for, uh, for different, uh, different functions within an application. Um, or, uh, yeah, or, or different keeping different applications uh, uh, within resource boundaries within a, a given Kubernetes cluster. 
And uh, and so uh, developers will commonly have uh, a need to, to connect to a variety of different namespaces across a variety of different clusters of, of different types and, and maybe in different locations. And so workspaces allows that flexibility to craft roles uh, and, and groups uh, where that, that can be really an arbitrary combination of you know, any, any namespace they attach to Sanzu Mission Control. Uh, you can um, align with the workspace and, and align that with the identity and access control. So uh, as, as for all the clusters that are under TMC management, uh, you're, you're able to align them with your Active Directory, your LDAP groups, what have you, to quickly align your workforce and your developer uh, groups uh, with the combination um, of, of access that they need across your, your global environment.